Praise the Lord. It's time to get into the Word of God. Praise God. I'm so excited about the Word. And today we're going to be talking about the power of the tongue and our words. We're going to be talking about the power of the tongue and our words. Amen. We're going to be talking about the power of the tongue and our words. Amen. Can you turn your Bibles quickly to Proverbs, the 18th chapter, and the 21st verse? Amen. And welcome to Going With Purpose Ministries. And we're going to just speak the word of God in this time that he has blessed us with. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And I'm reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it and indulge in it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. Amen? Amen. So our words are extremely powerful. Amen? Amen. If you love life, you got to speak life-filled words. Amen? Amen? If you love the things of death, you have to speak death-filled, and you don't want to do that, by the way. But if you speak negative words, if you speak words of doubt, that's what you will speak over yourself. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Now we're going to talk about five reasons we need to be concerned about the words we speak in our everyday lives. Amen? Five reasons we need to be concerned about the words we speak in our everyday lives. Amen? Number Amen. one. We were made in the image and likeness of God. Amen? Amen? We were made in the image and likeness of God. That's number one. We by us being made in the image and the likeness of God, we have his spirit on the inside of us. Amen? Amen. Praise God. We were we, we have his spirit. There's power, just like he. We like, like I said before, we like chips off the old block. Amen. We are made out of the God stuff. Amen. Amen. So our words are powerful. Amen. Amen. Our words can build. Our words can create, so to speak, because God's words are in us. Amen. Amen. Our words can ruin everything around us. Amen. Because we have that same power. We have the same spirit of faith, the Bible says, as God has. Amen? Amen. The world was framed by the words of God. The scripture says in Hebrews 11, the words were framed by his words. Amen? Amen. And we can speak words to frame situations. Amen? And so we have to be careful with our words. So number one, we were made in the image and likeness of God. Amen. We got to know that. That we were made in his image and his likeness. Just like he, when God created the heavens and the earth, he didn't say abracadabra. Amen. Amen. The Lord said, let there be light. Amen. He spoke the worlds into exist existence. Amen. Amen. He spoke the universe into existence. Amen. There's power. There was power in his words. And there are there's power in our words, just as there is power in his word, because we were made in his what? Image and his likeness. Amen. 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 So if we were made in the God who is love, who was made in his image and likeness, then we should be people that speak words of love and affirmation. Amen. 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 Encouraging words. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But we should speak words like the type of words he spoke. Amen? Amen. We should speak, you know, Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. But she, we should speak the type of words that Jesus spoke when he walked on the face of this earth. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So number one is we were made in the image and the likeness of God. Amen? I'm talking about five reasons we need to be concerned about the words we speak in our everyday lives. Amen? In our everyday lives, we need to remember when we go to work every day, or whatever your schedule may be, we need to remember we were made in the image and the likeness of God. Amen. At school, you need to remember that you were made in the image and the likeness of God. Our, your words should be godly. 
Our words should be seasoned with salt. They should be godly words. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? When we go to the gas station, go to the grocery stores, and we go to, to entertainment centers, amen, the basketball game, the football games, amen. amen? We need to remember that we were made in the image and likeness of God, amen? Amen. Amen, and, 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 and our words will do just as the Lord's words did when we believe, amen? amen? When we believe in the positive things and godly things and when we believe in the ungodly things, the words will work, amen? So we have to be concerned and careful about the word we speak, amen? amen. We have to be, amen? Number two, we're talking about five reasons why we need to be concerned about the words we speak, yeah. In our everyday, <coughs> excuse me, life. In our everyday life, we talk about mainly we talk about the power of the tongue and our words. Amen. Number two, our words are powerful. They build up or tear down those around us. Amen. Number two, our words are powerful. They build up or tear down those around us. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to Ephesians 4. Turn, turn your Bibles to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. And I'm going to be reading again from the Amplified Version. And we're going to be reading the 29th verse and the 31st and the 32nd verses of Ephesians, the fourth chapter. It says in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the 29th verse in the Amplified, in the Amplified Version, it says, Do not let unwholesome, foul, profane, worthless, vulgar words ever come out of your mouth. Amen. King James verse said, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Right? But that which is good to be edifying. Amen. That, that it may minister grace to the hearers. Amen. Amen. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of Amen. our mouth. Since we were made in the image and the likeness of God, we should let no corrupt communication Proceed out of our mouth for that which is good to the building, to the edification of those who are around us. Amen? Amen. The Amplified Version says, Do not let unwholesome, foul, profane, worthless, vulgar words ever come out. Ever. It says, Don't ever let them come out of your mouth. Amen. The Lord God, who we were made, whose image we were made in, never let profane, vulgar language come out of his mouth. Amen. 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 But only such speech as is good for building up others. Amen. God has called us to build up others. Amen. Amen. He's called us to be encouragers. Amen. He's called us to look for the good in people. Amen. Amen. To Amen. celebrate those who are around us. Celebrate people. People are going through tough times. Amen. Amen. Some Amen. people don't have any friends. Amen. You got to know people's story. Everybody has a story. Amen. We cannot put labels on people, but we have to see people and know that they are made in the image and the similitude and likeness of God. Amen? Amen. I don't care how many evil ways they may have. I don't care how rude they may be. I don't care how many ugly ways they may have. We have to love people as God loved people. Amen? Amen. And we got to speak life to them. Amen? We can't go there with them. Amen? Amen. When they seek to go low, we got to go high, like the former first lady just said. <laughs> Amen? We got to go high. Amen? We can't Amen. stoop down to other levels. Amen? Amen? We got to be those who act like Christ. Amen? Behave like Christ Jesus. Amen? But it says, again, it says, uh, uh, words ever come out. Let's say, but only such as is good, and this is Amplifier, good for building up others according to the need and the occasion so that it will be a blessing to those who hear you speak. Our word shall be a blessing to those who hear us speak. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Our word shall be a blessing. They, people need to be better off as a result of being around us because of the words we speak. 
They need to gravitate toward us because we speak the words of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because we speak the words of the Lord, people should gravitate to us. Amen? Amen. Because they want to get it, can't get enough of the words of God. Hallelujah. Words that are wholesome. Amen. Amen. Words that come from the heart and mind of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Ain't that good? It says, uh, so that it will be a blessing to those who hear you speak. 30. It says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, but seek to please him by, by whom you were sealed and marked and branded as God's own. For the day of redemption, the final deliverance from the consequences of sin. 31 says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, perpetual animosity, resentful strife. Amen? Amen. Resentful strife. You're not going to be competing with your words. You're not going to be competing with others, arguing with them in, comp in evil competition. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says, fault finding and slander. We're not going to slander people with our words. Amen? Amen. We're not going to slander people. We're not going to slander people's reputations with our words. Amen? Um, it says, um, it says, let all bitterness Wrath and anger, clamor, perpetual animosity, resent, resentment, strife, fault finding, and slander be put away from you, along with every kind of malice, all spitefulness, verbal, verbal abuse. Amen? Amen. We're not going to verbal abuse anybody. We have to be careful as parents. As parents, we cannot verbally abuse our children. Amen. Especially amen. in their formative years. Amen. amen. They have been developed. Amen. They already have low self-esteem many times. They already feel insecure about how they look. Amen. amen. They already are trying to find out who they are. And we don't need to verbally abuse them. We need to find the features that are strong and the features inside and out and we need to celebrate them. Amen? Amen. Celebrate our children. Celebrate their strengths. Celebrate the things they are good at. Amen? Tell them how beautiful they are if they are females. Tell them how handsome they are if they are males. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah! Tell them how, how, they, how, how they are breathtaking. Hallelujah to God. Speak life. Amen. Encourage them. Amen. 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 We need, they need to get it from home. They might not be getting affirmation. At, uh, like, whoa. They might not be getting affirmation away from home. They might not be getting encouragement away from home. They might not. They might have a whole team of people coming against them, putting them down. We have to be those that are in their corners. Amen. Amen. We need to be Amen. in their corner. They need to be able to depend on mom and dad to keep them built up, to keep them strengthened. Amen. Amen. To love on them, to hug them. Amen. And show them affection. Amen. We need to be a strength to them. We don't need to abuse them with our mouths. Amen? Amen. Husband, you don't need to abuse your wife with your mouth. Amen? Amen. Wives, you don't need to abuse your husband. Don't manipulate and try to abuse your husband with your mouth. Amen? Amen. God didn't call. That's ungodly. He called us to be godly, not ungodly. Amen? Amen. Amen. We need to be godly with our speech. Amen? Amen. Abuse is real. Amen? Words carry power. Amen? Amen? Words are powerful. They are strong. Hallelujah. And they can really do some damage. Amen? Amen. So we want to make sure as it says here, it says and slander be put away from you along with every kind of malice, all spitefulness, verbal abuse. Hallelujah. Male violence. It says um, I'm going to read 32 to it. It says, Be kind and helpful to one another, tenderhearted, compassionate, understanding, forgiving one another readily and freely, just as God in Christ has forgiven you or has forgave you. 
Amen? Amen. So we want to make sure that we are godly with our mouth. Amen? Number three says the words we speak can build. Oh, no, no. I was on number two. I'm sorry. It says our words are powerful. They build up and tear down those around us. Amen? Amen. Our words, number two, hallelujah, of the five reasons we need to be concerned about the words we speak in our everyday lives is, because, is our words are powerful. They build up or tear down those around us. Amen? Amen. We don't want to be known as those that tear down people around. We, have, we should have a reputation for being those who exalt, those who encourage those who are around us. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Number three. The number three reason, the reason we need to be concerned about the words we speak is the words we speak can build up, build up our faith and those around us or weaken it. Amen? The words we speak can build up our faith and those around us or weaken, weaken it. It can weaken our faith. Amen? amen? The words we speak. Amen? So when we speak our word, they can build our faith or weaken amen. our faith. Amen? The scripture said without faith, it is impossible to please God. But he that cometh, but she that cometh to God must believe that he is God and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen? Amen. It's important for our faith to stay strong. Amen? Amen? And our words can weaken our faith or strengthen our faith. Amen? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. He walked on water. Hallelujah. Jesus, he healed the blinded eyes. Amen. Jesus fed the 5,000 men. Hallelujah. And the women and children. Amen. Jesus had faith. Hallelujah. He had faith in God. Hallelujah. He had faith. When he came here, he was God in the flesh, but he didn't come here as God. Hallelujah. But he was God. Amen. And he is God. Amen. And he walked in faith, strong faith. He kept strong in faith. Hallelujah. And we got to maintain strong faith. And we got to make sure we're saying things that agree with having strong faith. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We got to make sure that our words are faith-filled words. Amen? Amen. We can't be talking about, man, she scared me to death. Amen. That's not faith words. Amen? It might seem just as harmless as possible, but we have to consider why are we talking about something tickled me to death or scared me to death? Amen? Amen. If I believe that the words that I speak are powerful, those words are not, those words don't agree with what the word is saying when it says death and life is in the power of the tongue. Amen. We got to make sure, we can say, man, that tickled me to life. Amen? Right. Be careful. We got to be careful with the words. Amen. Because it, it might seem nitpicking and it's not. Mm -hmm. Amen. We Amen. talk about every time you turn with folks dying all around us and stuff because we we too we talk about death too much. Amen. We use death expressions too much. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So uh, number three is the words we speak can build up, build up our faith and those around us or weaken it. Amen. The words we speak can build up. Amen. We need it. We don't have nothing faith filled to say. We need to say nothing at all. Amen. Amen. We need to hold our tongue to our mouth. We don't need to say nothing if we can't apply. We can't build the faith of others around us. Amen. Amen. It is important. It's important that we that we are, are careful, carefully selecting our words. Amen. In situations that we're dealing with. Amen. And trials and tests, you know, that you're 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 in or, along with others around you in your everyday life. Amen. Amen. You gotta make sure that you're the one that's speaking hope and faith in the situation. You should be the one that's doing that as a Christian. We should be the ones that are doing that, that that's speaking hope and faith in the situation. That we see a, that, hey, it, it's going to be okay. God has us. Amen? Amen? God is in control of this situation. 
It gets better. Amen. Amen. The Lord is with us. He said that he would never leave us nor forsake us. I trust God in this situation. I don't know how. I don't know when. But I know God is going to show up in this situation. He's going to turn it around. Amen. We need to be the ones that's saying that. When we're going through hard trials and tests and tribulations along with others around us. Amen. Amen. All of us going through the same trial. We need to be the one that offer the hope. We need to be the one talking about how how wonderful and how great he is and, and how how he is he is on this thing. He's in this thing. He is on it. Amen. He's on it. Amen. Even though it don't look like he's on it, even though it looks hopeless, we need to be the one that says he's on it. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't care what things look like. I don't care how I feel. I know the Lord will deliver. In this situation. Hallelujah. We got to speak words of faith. And hope. In, in our heart. Trials and suffering. And pain. Amen? Amen. So number three says the words we speak. Can build up our faith. In those around us. Or weaken it. Amen. Amen. Yeah, the words we speak. Can weaken the faith. We try and get people. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Oh boy I'm about to get ahead of myself. But. <laughs> We got to build people's faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 People's faith need to be built up. Amen. They need to know the Lord liveth. Amen. Amen. I mean, you know, it's easy to praise God with everything going good. Everything is going wonderful. Amen. Got plenty of money. Amen. Amen. Beautiful house, beautiful cars, beautiful children. Children not getting in any trouble. Amen. Amen. It's easy to praise the Lord and thank Him and just celebrate life. A beautiful day outside. Amen. Amen. Flowers are beautiful. The birds are chirping and singing and everything. It's easy to praise God when you're on the beach and, and then you're on vacation and, and you're just chilling and, and the wind is blowing against your body. And, 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 you, and, and you all, if you don't have to work for six, seven, eight days, it's easy to praise God. But what, what, what about when things are challenging, when, 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 when things are not going exactly the way you want them to go? Mm -hmm. How do we respond to that? Can we still have the same level of faith as we have when everything is going wonderful? Amen. And that's what the people need to see. Amen. Amen. When they're around us. Amen. That's what they need to hear, those type of the strong words of faith. Amen. Now, number four. We're talking about five reasons why we need to be concerned about the words we speak in our everyday lives. Number four, our words can hinder the unsaved from coming to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Our words can hinder the unsaved from coming to Jesus. Amen. Let's go to something. I'm just going to quote. I think God helped me to remember this um, first. Psalm, the first chapter says, Blessed is the man or woman that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor standing in the way of, of sinners. Are we standing in the way of sinners? Are we blocking sinners from coming to Jesus? Amen? Amen. Amen. Our words can hinder the unsaved from coming to Jesus. Are we hindering the unsaved from coming to Jesus because of the words that we are speaking? Amen? Amen. Because they're hearing the word. We're, 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 we're saying, like my mom used to say, you know, he, that, that person was talking out both sides of their mouth. Amen? You're talking God on this side of your mouth, and you're talking defeat and fear, degradation on this side of your mouth. Amen? Amen. Are we preventing and hindering people from coming to Jesus because of the things we're saying? Amen? Amen? Amen. We got to watch our words, amen, among, they're watching us, people that are not saved, they're watching how we respond to tribulations and trials, they're listening to the words that we are saying, amen, amen. they're wanting to come to Jesus and they're seeing you and they're trying to figure out now, now, is he real or not, is he real or is it not real, you know what I mean, amen. and they like, man, if he real, you know, I think I'm going to make a decision for Christ. I don't try that one. I looked at. I tried that one over there. I tried that one over there. 
And but but it's something different. I'm still checking him out, trying to see if he got something authentic, you know, because I really I would like to believe in Jesus. Amen. I would Amen. really like to believe in Jesus, but you know, I'm trying, is he real? You know, and see some they can they people are watching us in that manner. They're watching us just like that. And they 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 hoping that we really have Jesus. And that Jesus is real because the life, the only Jesus some people would ever see is the one that in us. Amen. They're not Amen. going to a church. They're not turning on turning church on TV. Amen. The only Christ that some people will ever see is the Christ that's in us. Amen. 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 So they need to see us speaking words of the Lord. Hallelujah. The words of Christ. Hallelujah. The kind of words that Christ spoke. Hallelujah. They need to hear us speaking the kind of words Christ spoke when he walked on this earth. Amen. 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 The kind of words that causes sinners and prostitutes and trunks and, and tax collectors. They gravitated toward Jesus because they were listening to the words he was speaking. They saw that he had the love of the Lord. Hallelujah. He was full of love. He was full of grace and truth. His words were seasoned with salt. Everything he said was right. Everything he said was right. Everything he said was timely. Perfect timing. Timing. All his words were, were in perfect timing. Everything. Just everything was just on it that he spoke. Amen? Amen. And that's what we got to make sure that we are yielded to him so our words can be of such. Amen? We have to yield to him. Die to ourselves. Crucify this flesh. And yield and, you know, be in a posture of surrender. We have to always have a surrender life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because we got to consider people still need to be saved. They still need to be saved. Amen? Amen. We hardly ever hear people talking about salvation these days. Amen? Amen? But people still need to be saved. They need Amen. eternal life. You just don't be, you're not saved just because God created you and because God loved you. You have to make a decision for Christ. People are still making decisions for Christ. They're still in the valley of decision whether they want to serve and walk with Christ or not. Amen? Amen. So we want to make sure that we don't block them out. Like Psalms, the first chapter says. You know, we don't want to stand in the way of sinners. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Now, number five. And the last one is number five. We can develop good habits or bad habits. Speaking words. Amen? Amen. Number five is we can develop good habits or bad habits. Speaking words. Words. Amen. We're talking about five reasons we need to be concerned about the words we speak in our everyday lives. Number five is we can develop good habits or bad habits speaking words. Amen. Amen. See, if we keep if we speak negative words all the time, we get in the habit. Before you you speaking it, don't even realize you're speaking them. Yeah. Amen. Because you're in a habit. In the same way, on the flip side, you can speak good words, faith-filled words, godly words. And you're getting in the habit of speaking life-filled, godly words. Amen? Amen. And that's what we want to get in the habit of doing. We want to speak the words of the Lord. Amen? We want to speak words of hope, affirmation. We want to speak words of, of encouragement. We want to speak words of life. We want to speak words of the Lord. Amen? Amen? We want to be in the habit of doing that. Amen? On an everyday basis. Amen? Amen. We want to press our way and speak. I don't care what it looks like. We're going to speak the Lord's word. We live in a dark world. We live in a dark world. This is a dark world. We don't have, we don't have, we, we don't have the luxury not to spend time with God. We have to spend time with God so he can rub off on us. He can shine, shine, shine through us. He can shine through us like that song says. We want the Lord to radiate through us, but we have to be in a posture of surrender. Amen? Amen? We have to be yielded to him on a regular basis. We have to yield to the Lord. 
the Lord. Amen. Amen. We have to yield to the Lord. Amen. Amen. We have to yield. Lord, not my way, your way, your way, your way. Not what I want is what you want. God is what you want. I'm tired of messing up. I'm tired of doing things my own way. I always foul everything up when I try to do things my own way. Hallelujah. Amen. But we want to make sure that we don't we develop good habits. Good habits. With the words we speak. Good habits. Good words. Amen? Amen. 24-7, 365. Even in our dream, we want to speak good words. When we sleep, we want the words to be, you know, some people talking about sleep. And we want the words to be good words. Amen? Amen. Godly Amen. words. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, other scriptures in the Bible that minister about the power of the tongue and our words. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to James, the third chapter. Amen. Turn your Bibles quickly to James, the third chapter. We're going to look at some other scriptures that deal with the, um, how the word, amen. Let's see. He said, other scriptures in the Bible that minister about the power of the tongue and our words. Amen. Turn to James, the third chapter, quickly. I want to turn to James, the third chapter. Amen. James, the third chapter. Okay. And I'm going to still read from the Amplified Version of the Bible. And we're talking about the power of the tongue and our words. Amen. Amen. It said, now, uh, verse 1 says, <coughs> excuse me. It says, now many of, our, of you should become, it says, not many of you should become teachers, serving in an official teaching capacity. My brothers and sisters, for you know that we were, we who are teachers will be judged by a higher standard because we have assumed great, greater accountability and more condemnation if we teach incorrect, incorrectly. Amen? Amen. For well, we all stumble and sin in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, never, never saying the wrong thing, he is perfect. He is a perfect man, fully developing character, without serious flaws, able to bridle his whole body, and and re and ruin in in it, um, and in the entire nature, taming his human faults. Amen? Amen? And weaknesses. Amen? Praise God. So we can, your words, the words we speak, amen, if you can control, if you can, God, can't nobody control the tongue. Amen? Only God can control this. But when we allow God to control our mouths, then every other part of our being, our bodies and stuff will be such subject to God. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's go. Amen. It says, uh, For we stumble in sin in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, never saying the wrong thing, he is perfect. He's a perfect man, fully developing character, without serious flaws, brought by bright the whole body, and the entire nature taming his human faults and weaknesses. Third verse says, Now if we put bits into the horse's mouth, to make them obey us, we guide their whole body as well. Fourth verse says, 